No chopsticks arm, no catch tower. SpaceX is working on another landing method for both Starship and Booster, landing on a drone ship. So what's the real reason why SpaceX chose this landing method? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. All right, so since 2021, when Starship first appeared, Elon and SpaceX began harboring bold plans to land the Super Heavy Booster, an upper stage of Starship, on a platform in the vast ocean. However, a while later, this method no longer seems feasible due to the emergence of the Mechazilla Tower with those unique chopstick arms that are capable of catching and landing the rocket in a very special way. Interestingly, recently we have seen the prospect of sea landings return, particularly the use of autonomous drone ships to receive the massive Starship spacecraft. Although this is just a small detail that we found in the Environmental Impact Statement EIS published by the FAA back in June, it also indicates the development of this method in the near future. SpaceX may be exploring the potential benefits of landing both the Starship second stage and the Super Heavy booster at sea. First, let's talk about landing the booster. Through its Falcon rockets, SpaceX has slowly but surely refined and perfected the recovery and reuse of orbital-class rocket boosters, rather than coasting 500 to 1,000 kilometers downrange after stage separation and then landing on a drone ship at sea. Those boosters flipped around, canceled out their substantial velocities, and boosted themselves a few hundred kilometers back to the Florida or California coast, where they finally touched down on basic concrete pads. Unsurprisingly, canceling out around 1.5 kilometers a second of downrange velocity, equivalent to Mach 4.5, and fully reversing that velocity back towards the launch site is an expensive maneuver, costing a ton of propellant. For example, the nominal 25-second re-entry burn performed by almost all Falcon boosters likely costs about 20 tons, that's approximately 40,000 pounds of propellant. The average around 35-second single-engine landing bird used by all Falcon boosters likely costs 10 tons, 22,000 pounds of propellant. Normally, that's all that's needed for a drone ship booster landing. For return to launch site RTLS landings, Falcon boosters must also perform a large 40-second boost back burn with three Merlin 1D engines, likely costing an extra 25 to 35 tons of propellant. In other words, an RTLS landing generally ends up costing at least twice as much propellant as a drone ship landing. Using the general rocketry rule of thumb that every 7 kilos of booster mass reduces payload to orbit by 1 kilo, and assuming that each reusable Falcon booster requires about 3 tons of recovery-specific hardware, mostly legs and grin fins, a drone ship landing might reduce Falcon 9's payload to LEO by around 5 tons, from 22 to 17 tons. The extra propellant needed for an RTLS landing might reduce it by another 4 to 5 tons, down to 13 tons. Likely less than coincidentally, a Falcon 9 with a drone ship booster recovery has never launched more than 16 tons to LEO. While SpaceX has not provided NASA's ELV perf calculator with data for orbits lower than 400 kilometers, it generally agrees, indicating that Falcon 9 is capable of launching 12T with an average RTLS landing and 16T with a drone ship landing. This is to say that landing reusable boosters at sea will likely always be more efficient. The reason that SpaceX has always held that Starship Super Heavy boosters will avoid maritime recovery is that landing and recovering giant rocket boosters at sea is incredibly difficult, it's risky, it's time-consuming, and it's really expensive. That makes a rapid reuse on the order of multiple times a day or a week almost impossible and inevitably adds to even more costs of recovery, which could actually be quite significant for a rocket that SpaceX eventually just wants to cost a few million dollars a launch. However, so long as at-sea recovery costs less than a few million dollars, there's always the chance that certain launch profiles could be drastically simplified and end up cheaper by the occasional at-sea booster landing. If the alternative is a second dedicated launch to partially refuel one starship, it's possible that a sea landing could give Super Heavy Booster the performance needed to accomplish the same mission in a single launch, lowering the total cost of launch services. If, like with Falcon 9, a sea landing could boost Starship's payload to LEO by a third or more, the regular sea recovery of Starship would also necessarily cut the number of launches SpaceX needs to fill up a Starship moon lander by a third. Given that SpaceX and NASA have been planning for Starship tanker launches to occur around 12 days apart, recovering boosters at sea becomes even more feasible. 
In theory, the Starship launch vehicle CEO Elon Musk has recently described could be capable of launching anywhere from 150 to 200 plus tons to low Earth orbit with full reuse and RTLS booster recovery. With so much performance available, it may matter less than it does with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy if an RTLS booster landing cuts the payload to orbit by a third, a half, or even more. At the end of the day, just 100 tons to LEO could be more than enough to satisfy any realistic near-term performance requirements. But until Starships and Super Heavy boosters are reusable enough to launch multiple times a week or even a day and reduce the launch cost to single-digit millions of dollars, it's hard to imagine SpaceX willingly leaving so much performance unused by skipping at sea recovery just on principle. Regarding the sea landing of Starship's second stage, although it may offer fewer technical and performance advantages compared to the landing of boosters, it opens up an important strategic aspect for SpaceX. This makes the choice of landing site more flexible, utilizing a unique geographical advantage for Starship. Offshore landings not only minimize risks to residential communities in case of an incident, but also create a larger playground for Starship. This allows land-based launch towers to rest and refurbish, thereby increasing the launch frequency. And that's a key factor in SpaceX's ambitions. But make no mistake, catching Starship with Mechazilla Tower remains the primary goal. Sea landings are merely a supplemental strategy, another piece of the bigger picture of the future of space travel. SpaceX is getting closer to realizing the ambition of landing Starship at sea, with Flight 5 in Texas being the crucial first step in this plan. By maintaining the current landing design without landing legs, SpaceX is optimizing the operational process of Starship. This allows for faster repair and refurbishment, significantly reducing the time between flights. This quick turnaround capability is not only an impressive technical achievement, but also provides a significant competitive advantage for SpaceX in the space industry. However, the road ahead remains challenging. Landing with a Mechazilla arm requires near-perfect precision. Each landing will be a showcase of the combination of advanced engineering and precise control. Even a slight error of a few inches could lead to serious consequences, not just for Starship, but also for the valuable surrounding infrastructure. SpaceX began construction of the next-gen launch towers at its Starbase facility in Texas back in 2021. Measuring 146 meters, that's 480 feet, it's the tallest launch tower in the world and could provide the basis for future planned Starship launch setups in Florida. It's designed to support launch, vehicle integration, and catch of the Super Heavy rocket booster, SpaceX says on its website. Catching the booster reduces mass from the launch vehicle, moves hardware complexity to the ground, and enables rapid reuse of the rocket. Following liftoff, after the two stages separate in flight, Super Heavy returns to the launch site, reignites its engines to slow the vehicle down, and the tower's arms catch the rocket booster before restacking it on the OLM for its next flight. The previous Starship flight test on June 6th saw SpaceX perform a splash landing of the Super Heavy booster, successfully returning it to Earth in a major step towards achieving reusability. SpaceX ultimately aims to build a massive fleet of Starship rockets capable of transporting crew and cargo throughout the solar system. According to Elon, the rocket will allow a human colony to be established on Mars in the next 10 to 20 years. Awesome! All right, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time. See ya.